Hey, good morning. It's me again. I'm in my kitchen this time. I just wanted to show you something. My 16 year old did the dishes. Yes, he did. Did a good job. So proud of him, my 16 year old. It's not easy being a teenager and the only teenager in the house, <laughs> the only man in the house. Yes, <clears throat> according to Islam, my son is an adult, a grown up, <laughs> a full adult. Yes, in Islam, there's no such thing as adolescents or teenagers. So you go through being a child and then as soon as you reach pu puberty, that's it, you are considered an adult. And since Islam came in seventh century, Mecca, South, uh, Arab, Arab, Saudi Arabia, there's a lot of things that Westerners, you know, people that live in America, in Europe, in Australia, you know, in other parts of the world that don't understand. That's why it's so important to teach people, to educate people and to let them know. So don't be shy, don't be scared, ask a Muslim any question. There's no such thing as a taboo question in Islam. We speak about how to have sex with our spouse. We speak about how to go use the bathroom. So there's no taboo subject. You can ask us anything. You see someone wearing a headscarf like me, go towards them and say, good morning. How are you? Uh, I'm interested in learning more about your faith. What Islam says about this? What Islam uh, view regarding this particular topic? Can you give me a copy of a translation of the Quran in English, in Italian, in Russian, in Japanese and Chinese. It's important as human beings to connect, interact with one another and learn from each other. That's why God brought us here on earth. So he made us different so we can learn from one another, love each other and experience our different um, stories, cultures. <laughs> when I'm not... <laughs> I haven't eaten yet, so um, my brain is still trying to function and think, what should I say? So I just wanted to let you know, remember that. If you see a Muslim in the street, don't look at them like, oh, look at her, she's all covered up. Oh, she must be oppressed if it's a woman. Or if it's a man, oh my God, look at that big, big beard. Oh, that person must be smelly. Oh, this and that. Oh, he must be a terrorist. No, do not judge people. You don't know nothing about you never spoken to, you never interacted with, just go towards them and just smile and just start talking to them. I remember a few years ago, one anecdote and then I shall go. I was used to live in, in um, Brooklyn and I was all covered up, even with my hair, face covered, you could only see my eyes. I was wearing always black because black was always my favorite color and uh, dress super long, very loose. And I was uh, just walking, and this uh, Orthodox Jewish lady stopped me, and we had an amazing conversation. I was so happy and grateful that she asked why I'm covered up, what Islam says about this and that, why women are oppressed, why women don't have any rights. And we started talking, and I started sharing with her, and she was so shocked to find out that Muslim women have so many rights. It's unbelievable. They have the right to inherit, to marry who they want, to work, to educate themselves, to travel, to have businesses, not just one business, to be entrepreneurs and have different companies and business that they run. They have the right to have children if they want to. If they don't want to, it's also a, a choice, but it's better to have children because we're here to multiply, procreate <laughs> and have families. So yes, she was very shocked and she was even uh, more surprised that I actually wanted to stand here in the street and talk to her. And I'm saying, no, of course not, I'm not prejudiced. Uh, I don't have any prejudice against anyone of different faith. And I was raised in Europe. Um, my best friends are all Christian and Jewish people. I grew up, you know, among Arabs, among French people, white people mainly, because I was in France. 
but I never had this issue or problem with even when I wasn't wearing the hijab with people that I would see in the street that had it. I never once judged them. I thought, oh, it was just an Arab thing, a culture. I never knew that it was actually from God and that every woman, once they reach puberty and they outside in the street, in public, that they're supposed to cover and look more modest than if they were uh, in their house in the comfort of their home. Now, you know, you do what you want. You can walk around half naked or in a, in a swimming suit if you want to, just in t-shirt, in a bra and undies. Yes, but once you're outside, God wants you to be modest. So other men don't look at you lustfully and try to flirt with you and harass you sexually. But that doesn't mean just because you covered properly and modestly that you will not have people trying to flirt with you. I'm living proof because a lot of men, they're still trying even when I cover all. So it's just in accordance to what God says, what God teaches us and orders us to do. And hijab, yes, is in the Bible. Yes, even not drinking alcohol is in, is in the Bible and not uh, eating pork is in the Bible. Jesus never drank alcohol. He never ate pork. And he was the messenger of God. He is the true Messiah. And he's coming back, he's the word of God. He was born of a woman, a young lady. She was about 12, 13 year old. She was chosen by God, Allah, because she was the best woman of her time. She's uh, Mary, we call her Maryam in the Quran. So read the Quran, ask a Muslim any question and don't fear us, okay? I love you. <laughs> Till next time, this is Niyama. My friends call me Niyama. I love you, bye.